Imagine you're taking a test and you're feeling pretty confident. You breeze through the questions, convinced you've aced it. But when the results come back, your score is, well, let's just say it's not what you expected. How could this be? You were so sure you knew all the answers. What if you are the idiot? This scenario isn't uncommon and it taps into a fascinating quirk of human psychology known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a cognitive bias that might just explain why some people seem so confident in their abilities even when they're clearly out of their depth. But here's the kicker, it affects all of us, not just those we might label as incompetent or overconfident. So, what exactly is the Dunning-Kruger effect? In a nutshell, it's the tendency for people with limited knowledge or expertise in a given domain to overestimate their abilities. On the flip side, those who are highly skilled often underestimate their capabilities. It's a bit like a cognitive blind spot that can lead to some pretty interesting and sometimes troubling outcomes. The effect is named after psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger, who first described it in their 1999 study. They found that participants who scored in the bottom quartile on tests of humor, grammar, and logic grossly overestimated their test performance and ability. These participants' inflated self-assessments were dramatically out of step with their actual performances. But why does this happen? Well, it turns out that the same lack of knowledge that leads to poor performance also hampers the ability to recognize that performance as poor. In other words, if you don't know much about a subject, you also don't know enough to accurately assess your own knowledge or skills in that area. Think about it. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought you understood something perfectly, only to realize later that you had barely scratched the surface? That's the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. Now, you might be thinking, that's interesting, but surely it doesn't apply to me, I'm pretty self-aware. Well, here's the thing, the Dunning-Kruger effect isn't just about intelligence or general competence, it can manifest in any area where we have incomplete or incorrect knowledge. From political opinions to professional skills, from social interactions to academic subjects, we're all susceptible to overestimating our abilities in areas where our knowledge is limited. But let's dig a little deeper. What's actually happening in our brains when we fall prey to this effect? It turns out that our cognitive processes play a significant role. When we learn something new, we often experience a rapid increase in confidence. We get excited about our new knowledge and feel like we've mastered the subject. This is sometimes referred to as the peak of Mount Stupid, that point where our confidence far outstrips our actual competence. As we continue to learn, however, we start to realize how much we don't know. Our confidence dips as we enter the valley of despair. This is where many people give up, discouraged by the realization of how much more there is to learn. But if we persist, we gradually climb the slope of enlightenment, where our knowledge and confidence grow together more realistically. Now, you might be wondering, if we're all susceptible to this effect, how can we ever trust our own judgment? It's a valid concern and it highlights why critical thinking and self-reflection are so important. Being aware of the Dunning-Kruger effect is the first step in mitigating its impact on our lives and decision-making. One way to combat this bias is to actively seek out feedback and alternative perspectives. When we expose ourselves to different viewpoints and expert opinions, we're more likely to recognize the gaps in our own knowledge. It's also crucial to cultivate a mindset of continuous learning. Recognizing that there's always more to learn can help keep our confidence in check and motivate us to expand our understanding. But the Dunning-Kruger effect isn't just about individual psychology, it has significant implications for society as a whole. Think about how it might play out in fields like politics, where confidence often trumps competence in the public eye or in healthcare, where patients might overestimate their understanding of medical issues based on a quick internet search. 
the potential for misinformation to spread and poor decisions to be made is considerable. In the age of social media and instant information, the Downing-Kruger effect takes on new dimensions. We are constantly bombarded with information, and it's easy to feel like we've become experts on a topic after reading a few articles or watching a YouTube video. This illusion of knowledge can lead to the spread of misinformation and the entrenchment of uninformed opinions. Consider the impact on public discourse around complex issues like climate change or economic policy. When people overestimate their understanding of these intricate topics, it can lead to polarization and the resistance to expert opinions. This is where the Dunning-Kruger effect intersects with other cognitive biases, like confirmation bias, creating a perfect storm of misinformation and misunderstanding. But it's not all doom and gloom. Understanding the Dunning-Kruger effect can also be empowering. It reminds us to approach new information with humility and curiosity. It encourages us to question our assumptions and seek out diverse perspectives. In a way, it's a call to intellectual honesty and continuous self-improvement. Let's look at some real-life examples of how the Dunning-Kruger effect plays out. In the business world, it might manifest as a new entrepreneur who, buoyed by initial success, believes they've mastered the art of running a company. They might make overly risky decisions, ignoring advice from more experienced mentors. It's only when faced with unexpected challenges that they realize the depth of their inexperience. In academia, we might see it in students who, after taking an introductory course, feel they've grasped the entirety of a complex field. They might argue confidently with professors or more advanced students, unaware of the vast body of knowledge they've yet to encounter. Even in our personal lives, the Dunning-Kruger effect can influence our relationships and self-perception. How many of us have thought we were great listeners or excellent at reading people, only to be surprised when friends or partners point out our blind spots? But here's an interesting twist. The Dunning-Kruger effect isn't just about overconfidence in the less competent. Remember, it also suggests that highly skilled individuals tend to underestimate their abilities. This imposter syndrome can hold back talented people from reaching their full potential or sharing their expertise with others. So, how can we strike a balance? How do we cultivate confidence without falling into the trap of overestimation? The key lies in developing metacognition, the ability to think about our own thinking. By regularly reflecting on our knowledge and skills, seeking out constructive feedback, and remaining open to new information, we can develop a more accurate self-assessment. It's also important to recognize that expertise is often domain-specific. Just because we're knowledgeable in one area doesn't mean that expertise transfers to other fields. A brilliant physicist might still be a novice when it comes to literature or cooking. Acknowledging the limits of our expertise can help us approach new areas with an appropriate level of humility and curiosity. As we wrap up, let's consider the ethical implications of the Dunning-Kruger effect. In a world where expertise is sometimes viewed with suspicion and where anyone with an internet connection can present themselves as an authority, how do we ensure that important decisions are made based on genuine knowledge and skills? There's a delicate balance to strike between encouraging confidence and guarding against overconfidence. We want to foster environments where people feel empowered to learn and grow, but we also need to maintain respect for genuine expertise and the value of deep specialized knowledge. Perhaps the most valuable lesson we can take from understanding the Dunning-Kruger effect is the importance of intellectual humility. Recognizing that our knowledge is always incomplete, that there's always more to learn, can make us better thinkers, better decision makers, and better members of society. So, the next time you find yourself feeling absolutely certain about something, take a moment to pause, ask yourself, could this be my peak of Mount Stupid moment? Am I overestimating my knowledge in this area? What don't I know that I should know?
By cultivating this kind of self-reflection, we can harness the power of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Instead of being limited by our blind spots, we can use them as signposts, pointing us towards areas where we have a room to grow and learn. In the end, true intelligence isn't about knowing everything. It's about recognizing the vastness of what we don't know and being excited by the opportunity to learn. It's about approaching the world with curiosity, openness, and a healthy dose of humility. So, how smart are you? The answer might surprise you, but more importantly, it might inspire you to keep learning, keep questioning, and keep growing. After all, in the grand scheme of knowledge, we're all still climbing that slope of enlightenment. And isn't that journey the most exciting part?